All right, so moving on to reserving space. This is a really cool technique where basically the paint is just going to follow wherever we put the water. So holding our brush upside down again for this, we're going to draw out a tree. So I'm just, I know it won't show up all that well on the screen, but I'm just applying water in the shape of a tree with branches kind of branching off. And I'm allowing quite a lot of water to get on the page for this because I want it to kind of travel across the page. And for this, I'm going to mix some of that violet and ultramarine and just dot that in. And you'll see that the paint follows the areas that I've wet down. It doesn't go any further, it just follows these areas of water. And you can also channel the paint by applying more clear water, branching off. So you're just controlling where the paint goes by applying clear water. All right, so I'm just gonna clean this off. So for our next one, we are going to use a wet on wet technique, which is the most common techniques that watercolor artists who want to create really realistic paintings do. For this, it tends to work best if you're looking for realism on high GSM cold pressed paper. Wet on wet technique is when we wet down our paper first. So I'm just adding, this is supposed to be clear water. It's showing up a little bit yellow, but just imagine this is clear. It's not gonna impact my painting. I just had a little bit of yellow on the brush, that's fine. But the idea is that you wet down your paper first. And with this, you'll be wetting down your entire paper if you want to work on a wet on wet technique. Now this isn't particularly practical for all papers. Some papers, um, if you're using any sort of student grade paper, wetting down the entire paper first 
might not be a great idea because it can just weaken the paper if your paper can't withstand multiple layers. But if your paper can, like if you're using Arches High GSM, you wet down your entire paper and then you take some tape and tape your paper down to your painting board and this will prevent it from buckling. But anyway, so we've wet down our wet on wet section. I've wet it down quite a lot. The amount of dampness on your paper is going to create big differences and a lot of variation in the effects that you're going to get. For this particular thing where we're going to be doing fur, I'm going to take advantage of the water being wetter and more out of control than normal. As this dries, you get more control over the gradients. But while this paper is very wet, I'm going to come in with cat's tail. And I'm just and see for fur, if you really wet the paper, it'll start to kind of branch away. It's a cat turning away from us, so we'll just do a little face here. Whoops, that's going all over the place, but whatever. I'm just going to take a little bit of paper. And so a wet on wet technique can be good for a couple of things. You can use it for stylized effects like this, you know, like fur, or you can use it just for greater control. So as this dries, it's not going to uh, bleed out quite as much. It, and it's actually going to allow me to create smoother gradients. So it kind of goes from you having very little control when it's completely completely wet to you having an awful lot more control as it dries. All right, that's enough cat. So for the next one, it's going to be dropping in. So again, I'm going to wet down my paper. And this is actually, this is sort of where we can build up color very gradually, sometimes using a kind of stylized effect works, works well for this, but using see if I can get a clean wet brush, a clean wet brush. We're going to just wet our paper down first. And I'm using the lime as my reference for this one. So I'm going to mix together some greens with a little bit of ultramarine blue and a little bit of orange to bring the chroma down. And this is where we just drop in 
color. And depending on your paper and how wet it is, it'll take kind of different widths of putting these dots in for your paint to, to mix. So I've put down the darkest layer there. I'm going to come in with a slightly lighter layer that I'm gonna make by adding a little bit of yellow to that color and a little bit more water. I'm gonna dot that in. Remember, you can always re-wet your paper. So now I'm gonna re-wet my paper. Oops, just gotta get some really clear water. And I'm gonna start to drop in more yellows and higher chroma green. Because the paper wasn't quite wet enough, I'm just going around the base now and mixing this color in. And with a little paper towel, I'm just gonna dab off the excess. And you can also dot in water to create different effects. So like with these, for instance, dotting in some water kind of eats away at the paint underneath in ways that can be really interesting. Okay, so now I'm just going to create like a shadow under this. Another thing to do with your water is if you just kind of knock your brush into the water, or sorry, into the paint. It'll flow out in interesting ways. Just dropping in more color because I like contrast. Okay, and now we're gonna to move to the last one, which will combine two things. So a wax resist and a variegated wash, which is just a fancy way of saying that we're gonna use different colors. And for this, so the wax basically is gonna repel the color. I'm going to be moving the wax in the shape of a, um, what do you call it, dandelion. So just lines moving out. I'll do 
two actually just to have some effects here. So this can be a good way to preserve the areas you want to keep light on your painting. And you can also for like, you know, if you're doing a really realistic watercolor painting, you'll probably want to get yourself some masking fluid, which is just this gum like substance that you can put down, allow to dry and the paint will just skim over it. And at the end, you can just use your finger to get rid of it. So masking fluid, if you plan on, you know, doing a more realistic painting, but just be careful not to put the masking fluid on wet paper or it will rip it up. So we're going to use candle wax in the meantime, and I'm going to just clear my palette a bit. And I'm going to mix up some red, some orange, and some yellow. And I'm going to allow these to blend into each other. So first going to come in with red. And then I'm going to do a clear wash of water. Then I'm going to come in with a wash of orange and a clear wash of water or water, you know, kind of with the paint on it, it doesn't really matter. And then coming in with some yellow and you can see that the colors are blending together, but also that all that space that we've, we've reserved is showing through as white. Okay, well, I think that is it for, for today. Um, and again, the way, the great thing about watercolors is you can just sort of mix and match these techniques and use them all together in ways that are really, really interesting. Like I'm picking up paint here. There's just like an endless variety of effects. So hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.